training uh, around Christmas time of the year 2010. And God bless you all. The Lord loves you all very much. You're precious in His sight. We're going to have uh, Reverend Dan share with us the word this morning. And we have our sisters here with us in the Lord. And, and we are all keeping you in prayer that these messages are impacting your heart and transforming you from glory to glory and strength to strength. Victory to victory. Hallelujah. So, Reverend Dan, come on over. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're pleased to have our brothers and sisters here with us today as we share the Word of God. And, um, I don't really know where to begin other than that we, we, you got to forgive me. I'm still caught in the glory. We just finished with some praise and worship to Him. and I can still feel His presence so strong. And it just kind of like I don't really want to say anything. <laughs> Woo! It feels good. No, we don't it's a place to stay. <laughs> Amen. It's a place to abide. Uh, abide in the secret place. Uh, under, under the shadow of the Almighty. I'll be preaching Psalm 91. Which is, is really good, by the way. If you're out there and you're stressed and you're fearful and you, you, the devil's got you in bondage of fear and worry and doubt, Go to Psalms 91, not 911, Psalms 91, and, and meditate on God's Word, the provision for each and every one of you. Actually, I started to, to give a message about that today. You may, may still hit on that. But what I want to talk about today, today is about reasons for revelation. Um, we know in, in, in John chapter 16, uh, when, when Jesus told the disciples, that it was urgent, it was expedient, in fact, that I that I must go, because if I don't go, the Father will not send you the Comforter. Or basically what he was saying, i got to go, guys, because the Heavenly Father is going to send you one just like me that will not walk with you externally, but will live inside of you. And, uh, and, and, and Jesus went on to say in, in John chapter 16 that that same Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, will teach you all things. He, he will take a mind and He will reveal it. He'll show it to you. That same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus Christ is in each and every blood-washed, born-again, spirit-filled Christian. That same revelator. He is, the, he is the one that reveals the secrets of, and mysteries of God to you. And He wants to. He wants to more than you want to. He really does. You know, we get, we get so busy with our day-to-day stuff and we don't take the time to be in his presence Vicky, sister Vicky was talking about you know the importance of being in his presence we need to take time to be in his presence to just lay not even asking him for anything just laying and listening to him and the best way to do that is just what we did just now you put on some praise and worship music you just lay out in his presence or sit or whatever take all the cares of the world, just let it filter away and focus in on Him. And He will show you and tell you things. You know, Jeremiah 33, 3 talks about, call, that's God's phone number, Jeremiah 33, 3. <laughs> call on me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things that you know not of. And, but but you got to take the time and soak in His presence to be able to hear His voice. And totally surrendering yourself to Him in every area of your life. Amen. Surrendering to Him. You'll be amazed. Uh, Luna and I used to do this more often and I told her we're going to get back in, into a regular habit of being in His presence. You need to have a notebook by your bed because when you shut everything out and seek His face, He will start talking to you and you'll be amazed at the, at the things that He'll tell you in the revelation that you'll get. But today we're going to talk about reasons for revelation. The, the Bible talks about the spirit of, of, of wisdom and revelation, the spirit of, of, of counsel and mind. And it's very interesting because Jesus said, I never, John chapter 5, Jesus said, I never do anything that I don't first see the Father do. I never say anything that I don't first hear the Father say. Amen. Amen. The voice of God is the Holy Spirit. Come on. It's true. So we need to shut up sometimes and let him speak to us and talk to us. And why would he want to reveal things to us? And I'm going to ask Linda, uh, our, ba our, our base scripture today will be uh, Ephesians 
Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 19. Ephesians chapter 1, 17, 17 through 19. And remember, we're talking about the reasons that God would want to reveal His, His truths to us. Linda? Hi, well, in verse 16, St. Paul's praying this for the church, saying that he doesn't cease to give thanks for them, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of the understanding being enlightened, the Amplified says, being flooded with light, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us where he believe, according to the working of his mighty power. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to point out some reasons for revelation. In, in, in the, the scripture that Linda just read to us. Uh, the first one, to know him. To know him. T to know, hmm. <laughs> him. To know him is intimacy with him. You know, Adam knew Eve and she bore a child. It's like, you're not like, hey buddy, I know you. No, no, no. To know him is to be intimate with him. You know, Romans, um, I'm going to get to read that. Romans chapter 8, verses 28 and 29. Romans 8, verses 28 and 20. Excuse me, excuse me. Never mind. That's the next one. Sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. But to, to be intimate with him, to know him, to spend time with him. You know, Matthew 10, 1, you can go there later, but basically it's a picture of Jesus calling his disciples to him. They can't, they must first come, we must first come to him Matthew 10, 1 says, and Jesus called them to himself. We must come to Jesus. We must be intimate to Jesus. And then we notice the next part of Matthew 10, 1 says, that he anointed them to have power of all the principalities and demons and, and all that. But you're not going to have the power unless you first come and be intimate. So in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses 17 through 19, we're going to talk about some of the things that's revealed in that scripture. The first one is to know him intimately. The second one is to know the call of God. And that's where I need you to read Romans 8, 28 and 29. A lot of people are saying, what is my purpose in life? What is my calling? You're about to find out. Romans 8, 28 and 29. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Amen. Amen. He, a lot of people are wondering, maybe you're watching this and you're wondering, what is my purpose? What is my calling? Your calling and your purpose is that you be transformed into the image of Jesus. That's your calling. And before we can get there, we got to die to a bunch of stuff. You know, we, we, you know, I, I get the picture all the time of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said, not my will, but thy will be done. That he told it was, was willing to die to everything and yield himself to the will of the Father. But yet we see in another garden, in the beginning, in the Garden of, of Eden, where basically Adam said, not your will, Lord, but my will be done. And how many in the body of Christ are there today? That we, If we want to really understand our calling, then we're going to have to die to ourselves and let the Holy Spirit transform us into the very image of God. It's one of the reasons for God's revelation from His Word is that we become more like Jesus. 